Welcome into the Morning Burrito Podcast. I'm Michael. I'm Eric. And we have a special co-host this morning. Jenna Wise. Hi. Jenna, it's good to see you. Glad to have you here with us. We'll uh, we'll introduce you to her more properly here in a moment. But uh, we have an awesome show for you today. We actually have burritos today. We do. We do. Morning burritos. Morning like, burritos. All the way from, you know, one of our favorite spots. So I'm just going to drop the name today. They, we've had our show there, so well, they know yeah, about and it. They, they worked really hard this morning. We drive through, going through the drive through. We order like this long order. Get up and, they, and my card was declined. I have no idea why. They were puzzled. So I felt really bad. So Java Junkies, thanks for being patient with the, uh, pon- the Honda Pilot this morning. <laughs> we were a pain. <laughs> Stop being a pain, dude. We were. We were a pain. That's all I can say. Uh, so this is a pre-recorded podcast this time because uh, you're about to go on sabbatical. I am. And, uh, Nine days, actually. It, it, and Jenna came into town to visit before your sabbatical, and so we wanted to make sure we got this in. So just FYI, this is not live because uh, by the time this airs, you will be gone. I'll probably so. be fishing somewhere. Yes. So uh, we will be right back with the Morning Burrito Podcast. All right, we are back. And uh, by the way, we do have a studio audience of two um, sitting over there. You can hear them. I'm sure they will be making noise throughout the show today. today. They Um, might be a pain. It's probably more like the peanut gallery. Maybe. The heckling going on. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, so we have one vocal and one not. Yeah, it's one going to be making noise. The other one will be completely (laughs) silent the entire time, just laughing and smirking. Um, but hey, let's uh, let's introduce our listeners and our watchers to uh, Jenna. Jenna, you actually have uh, this is what you told me. So I, maybe you were lying oh, to you me. Had I don't a conversation know. Conversation without me. Okay. Good. Uh, you said that you're actually a fan of the show. She used the word fan. She used the word fan. That's great. Which you know I didn't know we had fans. Hey, listen, when she told me she watches this, I, I was like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, really? Wow, that's great. Yeah, and we used the phrase uh, in our last week's show that we were international, which is funny because I was talking about Arizona. Well, <laughs> I'm just an idiot. So, uh, no, but we're glad to have you. Well, when you said that, I did kind of think, okay, that's okay. We are international, though. We do have Singapore listeners. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Gabe, who's in this room, she knows all about people from like Singapore and Indonesia following her for stuff. Yeah. She get she gets likes and stuff from people all across the globe on things. Doesn't make sense. Okay. Anyway, uh, Jenna. So why don't you just give us quick uh, background on who you are and where you're from and and all of the good stuff so that our listeners know who you are. Yeah. Um. Hey, friends. I'm excited to be here. I grew up in Tucson, Arizona. I still live there with the fam, but. Pastor Eric over here was actually my youth pastor in middle school, um, and I got really close with his family. So over the summer break, I decided to try and come out to Oregon and see what it was like. So really enjoying it. Um, No cactus here, so that's kind of a new thing. Um, (laughs) That's a really good thing. (laughs) But yeah, right now I'm in college. I'm going to be a senior at the... It's okay to drop the name of the college. (laughs) I mean, be proud. At the U of A, yeah, Bear Down, go Cats. Wildcats. Yeah. Um, UCLA just left the Pac-12, so I'm a little sad. So do USC, um, good. Going to the Big Ten, baby. I, I mean, like, is that good, though? Like, I don't know. I feel like that, like... It's awesome. I mean, Look, I we're going to have a show we didn't even she, talk about. I, I, this, I is gonna, this is great. <laughs> See, now we're getting into my domain. She, we're going to talk about sports. This is right. fantastic. She last night. She, she was in the kitchen last night and told me that. I was like... Yeah, and you just saw her just she was like melting right there before us. Like, I feel like that's gonna be like they're not gonna respect our conference anymore, you know? Uh the Pac twelve will no longer cease to exist. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just be honest. <laughs> Oregon's gonna jump ship and go to the Big Ten. I mean that's Utah's probably sense. going to the like, Big Ten. They're all Big Ten is like over there, mid midwest. So like, I don't okay. Know. I don't know enough. So I'm gonna th- I'm gonna name drop a little bit uh, of a organization you all should be listening to the daily wire i know it's conservative people get on me about that but uh they have an awesome sports show called crane and company highly recommend and they said this last week that their belief is that there's going to be end up being four power conferences that have 16 teams each and that's what the that's what sports in college will look like going forward now that these big shifts are happening you know oklahoma and texas went to the sec so yeah 
I didn't know we were going to talk about this. I'm, yeah, really, you know, I, I'm stoked <laughs> we're talking about sports. The thing I learned about Jenna is you never really know where the conversation is going to go. You just, you just go with it. So. This is fantastic. Uh, so what's, what's a hobby you have, Jenna? What, what do you do when you're not doing school stuff? Um, I, I really like – it's really bad. I, I probably buy more craft supplies than I actually do crafts, but <laughs> it's, it's more of a hobby of buying the craft supplies. First thing she walks in the door and talks about is the cricket. Yeah. She, she was talking about cricket things. And then my wife, you know, does cricket. And mm-hmm. So they, like, hit it off again all over. But <laughs> it's good. Yeah. Like making stickers and all that jazz, you know. Cool. I may be calling you to have some stickers oh. made for student ministry. Merch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so – Today's podcast, uh, our topic is going to be uh, how and how and why a Christian would go to a Christian school and how they handle that, uh, or non-Christian school rather. Um, so you go to a state school, a big school. Now you don't go to ASU, which is widely considered the biggest party school in America. Um, That's at least. school up north. We don't talk about them. <laughs> That's funny. Um, but... Uh, but being at a state school, I didn't go to a Christian college either, and uh, so so we're going to start walking down the path of what it's like to be a Christian and how you handle that, because there's a lot of temptation on a non-Christian campus, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, you know this guy, and you've known him since you said middle school. Um, do you have a, a strong support system church-wise around you? Yeah, I'm I'm really thankful for what I have. I mean, I've always had really great youth pastors, and my family's been really supportive. We we try to go to church every Sunday. Hey, OVCN, love y'all. Um, <laughs> Throwing it out but, there. Yeah, you know, got a name drop. <clears throat> but yeah, I there's been Sundays that you know you have to miss sometimes. But I I feel really thankful for that. I've just been able to stay in touch and keep going, and you know, just be present i think so 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 the one thing i think we got back up though about your life jenna is is it's not just the college right now but you went to christian school growing up yeah right you went to push ridge mm-hmm. um the and lines. you yeah <laughs> which is a good school i mean we, i mean our son went there um and uh and stuff but but we've had conversations this week already about what were some i don't know misgivings about growing up in a Christian school and then transitioning into a state school, um, kind of like uh, maybe give us some of those examples we talked about. Um, yeah, it's just very different. I My graduating class was 83 people. Um, I got to speak at graduation, and I said everyone's name because I just had time, and I could. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Call them all up by name. You know, like this person does this for a hop, you know, went through all their stuff anyways, but... I, I remember walking into the U of A for my first class and it was like a psychology gen ed and it was 600 people in a lecture hall and I was just like, what did I get myself into? It's big. It's it's a bigger place and like it's just, you just don't expect it. Um, <laughs> well, well, you went you went from your, your Christian, you know, school that you graduated from uh, dressing appropriately to going mm-hmm. to college in your pajamas yeah we had a dress code um we had to do like polos and slacks no jeans or anything like that and then you get to college and everyone just wears what they want so <laughs> everything that you were taught just kind of went out the window yeah yeah all yeah. you got to do is spend like five or ten minutes on youtube and you'll find videos of college students being interviewed for one thing or another mm-hmm. and they all look like hobos that just woke up from <laughs> from their yeah. naps like I have to admit, when I was in college, I did the exact same thing. So <laughs> you went to it. You went to a Christian university that, up until recently, had similar dress code oh, issu- yeah. issues. Really? You wore jeans, but they had to be gray, not blue. Really? Because blue, I'm not really sure what would happen to you. But your legs would fall off, <laughs> I or you get pregnant it, or something. Yeah, I'm not I was going to say probably, or you know, if you wear blue jeans, you're you're um, being more attractive to the the opposite Listen, sex. Buddy, I'm attractive at anything. <laughs> Yeah, see, thank you. Thank you from the galley. See, so. you're lucky your kids are sitting in the I room. I know, honey, I know I just embarrassed you, but you know it's true. So um <laughs> so 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 part of your your growing up wow. though when you go to the uh you know to push ridge, uh you know they taught you. They taught you how to share your faith. They mm-hmm. taught you how to, you know, voice it, live it, you know, all of that. Um <laughs> and then you went to, you know, um school and it's like not quite how it maybe has 
been showing to you that it was going to play out. But yeah, I I had a religion teacher, and he just thought every day was going to be like an evangelical war. Like, I would sit down for lunch at a table alone, and people would just come up to me and ask about my faith, like, who I was, where I was from, just all the questions. Like, I was, like, prepared. I was bringing my Bible in the backpack every day. Like, I was trying to think of good points to talk about, but, like, I it is not a war, I promise. Um, <laughs> it's more... I mean, most people are just walking around with their AirPods on. They don't really pay attention to you. You kind of just do your own thing. But How heartbreaking. I mean, the, you were built up that everybody's <laughs> going to come and talk to you about Jesus, and then nobody even pays attention. Yeah, it was. Yeah, every day he was very passionate that it would be like that, but not you know, quite. You know, my, my, my first, one of my first memories about Jenna is uh, we were on a teen trip, and, uh, uh, you know, everybody's, you know, doing their thing, and we're packing out the church van, and... She's sitting in the first bench row behind the driver's seat. You She's know that, that seat where your favorite people sit so you can just try <laughs> and just whap them, you know? Well, it's usually the good students who want to talk. It, it, well, she can talk, let me tell you. Um, she can do this. But she likes these things called wasabi walnuts. Ew, gross. Right? Almonds. 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 Almonds, yeah, sorry. Got to get it right. Come I on. know. I'm, I'm, wow. And um, <laughs> so... She like introduces me to these things. And they're like really awesome. They're like good. They're hot. They burn. They taste. No. It's, just, it's just it's just something you would love. You would love. <laughs> yeah, these, right? love. Love is so, a very so. Here's this junior high term. girl that I, I don't really know yet. She's sitting there and she's eating. It. She goes here, eat. and I'm like, oh, okay. So you do it. It's like wow, this girl's got it going, right? So then I become addicted on this trip to this stuff. I stop and I go and I buy a bag. They're like ten bucks a bag, right? And I thought this is gonna be really good. So really what she here. brought was like like gone. We ate, we well, I probably ate most of them. So that's why I felt bad, Jenna. So just it being honest, fine. bought you the bag, and I'm like so good, so excited to share it with her. And I put share it back it, there, sure. and, she, and she dumps the whole bag on the floor no, of the van. All right, that no, was you not, did. That was not the, intentional the, though. The, y- I. You were getting gas. You were getting gas, right? He was out of the car, and I just thought it'd be funny to hide him under the seat for a little bit. You know, he was so proud of his giant bag. <laughs> the real story comes out. And like, I, I just thought it'd be funny. You know, we're all just in the middle of the trip. Everyone's kind of bored. But it is funny. Like, <laughs> I'm having fun just thinking about it. Well, and like, I don't know. I had friends in the front seat who thought it would also be funny. So we, you know, we just put him in the back there and under the seat, and he got in and. Like, the first thing he notices, like, I thought he would, like, you know, check on everyone. How are we doing? But he's like, where no. the heck are my Why almonds? would I do that? <laughs> it's about the wasabi. <laughs> so, like, he's looking everywhere for his almonds. And then he looks right at me, like, dead in the eye. And he's like, Jenna, where's the almonds? And, you know, so I, like, I I was getting a little concerned at this point. So I'm like, I don't mm, She can't mm, lie. She just can't. I really can't. So, like, all of a sudden, he just, like, goes down on my knee. Like, I'm ticklish. So, like, he was, like just getting after me and like I was just trying to get the almonds out under the seat as fast as I could because I just wanted this pain to end you know um and so then in, in, in doing everywhere. that I grabbed the bag and it was upside down and there was like three pounds of almonds on the church fan floor 10 bucks of almonds <laughs> all over the floor <laughs> And, and all she can Darn. do is laugh at this. Well, I mean, what did you want me to do? I'm assuming like, all the other <laughs> students were laughing as well because I would have been laughing oh, if oh, I was in that I'm, van. I'm, I'm sure. But yeah, but then we pick them up. And she takes a bag and she's scooping the salt. I was trying back to back in the it bag, up. right? I'm like, it sounds oh. like it sounds like our boys with the takis. They would sweep the 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 powdery exactly. stuff back into the bag. Exactly. Really so, bad. so here we are. So, <laughs> I thought it was gonna be really really funny, and we got our big bag of wasabi almonds to, as a welcome gift to Oregon, and. Um, she spilled them. No, she didn't spill them. But she, <laughs> oh, that would have been awesome. <laughs> she brought me wasabi almonds as a welcome gift from Arizona. So we huh, were on the same page. Yeah. So I don't know why we got on that rabbit trail, but to say that that things are are not always what they seem to be, and you know, sometimes I think as Christians we get in that mode of we're we're trained, we're taught, we're we're, we're told to live under these expectations, um, and then we get out in the real world and it's a little different, yeah. right? So, um, yeah. So yeah, so maybe so she's part of an EMT clan, mm-hmm. right? She's yeah. she's doing that on campus, right? You're you're like mm-hmm. saving lives and you're giving CPR and you're working with the drunks and you're getting puked on and right, it's all good stuff, right? I mean, you know, we're trying, yeah. UAMS, hey guys. <laughs> you throw it out there. She, <laughs> does, she drives a really cool car, anyway. It, yeah, it, I get to drive like a Ford Explorer with sirens. I don't get to use the sirens that much, but it's good stuff. I would use them every day. Yeah, you would get Just in trouble. Saying. I would just do that. 
you so would get them taken away. So talk to us. How, how does your faith, though, like, like, like how have you learned to work with your faith on campus and even with the, the EMT side? I mean, I think it's a really big part of serving others. You know, I mean, you're called to these people in their worst hour. Um, a lot of these patients are just scared. You know, it's an emergency situation for them. Like, it's a lot of foreign equipment. You've got lights and sirens pulling up on the scene. So, I mean, if you can really come alongside someone and just be kind, you know, be that servant that Jesus was all those years ago, you know, it's just, it makes a difference, I think, you know, you can really help to calm them down if you just get on their level and listen, you know. So that's one thing about you, Jenna, that I've always loved. When, when, when I think of you, I think of kindness, because your heart <laughs> is just kind, right? And I'm not Thanks. just, I'm just not like, you know, building you up here, because that really is, that's your heart. But there's got to be a part of you, though, when you pull up to help somebody like that, where your kindness may not be like Jesus. Um, yeah, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's really hard. I I mean, especially if it's in a situation, you know, where they're very intoxicated or, you know, they've done so on purpose. And, you know, it's, it's not what you want to be doing on a Friday night sometimes, um, getting thrown up on. But... Sounds, <laughs> sounds like a real, real fun time. But, you know, I mean, you just don't know everyone's story. You don't know what they're going through in the end. Mm. And, you know, you just... You know, you're called to be kind and do whatever you can so that maybe they can, maybe your actions will help put them in the right path someday. So that's yeah. kind of how you think about it. My, uh, my best friend from high school is a uh, captain oh, for yeah. a fire department in Beaver Creek, Ohio. Andrew, I don't think you watch, but <laughs> uh, shout out to him anyway. Um, but I think Andrew, I, I seem to remember Andrew telling me that one of his favorite passages as a uh, paramedic and EMT, you know, firefighter is the good Samaritan passage because it really doesn't matter who's laying there. He's going to stop and help yeah, no matter what. Um, awesome. They could be a, his mortal enemy is still going to be there to, to help them. So um, I think that's a, that's a noble, n super noble thing to do. Um, I can't do it cause I don't like the sight of blood. So <laughs> not going to be, yeah. and I certainly would not handle vomit very well. I, I would end up being the one throwing up. So moist. Okay. Really? See, like even she, she got it. She understands that word sounds awful. Just don't use it ever. Sorry. Ugh. Um. So, one of the one of the other things I'm interested to know, uh, Jenna, as as we continue down this path, is do you feel like since you've gotten to U of A, you've spent now three three years of school at U of A, um. Do you feel like temptation for you has gone up? Do you feel like there's more temptation now to to do things that you wouldn't normally do just because you're on a state college campus? Yeah, mom I, and dad are going to probably listen. So. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm sure the whole family is. I mean, yeah. I It's definitely a bigger environment, and there's a lot going on. Um, I know with Greek life, there can be a lot of partying, and there's just – there's a lot of opportunities to probably go the wrong direction, but I think that's just why you have to surround yourself with a lot of, a lot of friends, a good support system, and just remember what you were taught, you know? And I mean, sometimes it's a challenge, but you just got to think of the bigger picture and, you know, what, I mean, in the end, like a college campus, you're there to get a degree. So that's always how I kind of think about it. Like in this whole scheme of things, I'm just there to learn. So I just try to think of it that way. So one of the things that uh, we as as older adults now have seen over you put the yourself in the older adult category, uh, yeah, I mean wow. I, I'm welcome, welcome to life. I've been removed. <laughs> I've been out of high college for a very long time at this point. It's almost been twenty years, so um, it's been a long time. Um, but uh, when I was in school, I I went to college right around the Iraq War um, oh, yeah. uh, with Bush, and so there's a lot of protesting around that. But I think things are even amplified now with protests on college campuses and and just anger. Have you seen that? And what is that? What is that like for you as you as you see the, the, the anger on campus? Yeah, it's definitely very polarized. I I'm just really surprised sometimes with what I see classmates post on social media or, you know, what they can say in class. Um, and, and it's hard because. You know, if you were to ever argue with them on certain points, they they would they would leave you. You know, they would not be, want to be in a relationship anymore. But I mean, 
in in truth a relationship is exactly what they need so you have to be really careful about what you put out there because you can lose a lot of friends very quickly um Mm -hmm. so that's it's it's definitely a very polarized situation (laughs) one of the the accusations that i hear often about college campuses um and again i've this was played out when i was in school at least uh, because i didn't go to a conservative christian college um do you do you feel like it's it's sometimes hard to be honest about what you believe and who you are when you're in class um, with professors or other students? Yeah, it can definitely be rough. I you just you want to make sure that you're not saying anything that's going to stick with the professor and then subsequently give you a poor grade in the class. That can be hard. Um, I a lot of my science classes really focus on evolution and stuff like that. Um, so you just you have to be cautious. I I'm it's not it hasn't been completely anti like religion anti God in the classroom as much as like I mean we always watch like God's Not Dead and stuff like that in <laughs> in high school. It hasn't been as bad in that category, but especially just with classmates, I think that's where it's the worst. If you're if you're too open, they they will stop being friends with you on certain categories and I think one of the biggest things I've noticed is you know I we always took a comparative religion class so we would we would learn how to talk to like people of other faiths and how maybe we could you know convert them to Christianity or show them some points about their faiths that didn't make sense to us like like different faiths like what um you know like Mormonism um Muslim Islamic um Hindu what else did we do um, I think we did a unit on Jehovah Witness, you know, just just Good. different things that just different faiths that, you know, are present in the community um, and how you can have a conversation with them about it, even if it's not like directly conversion, just how to interact with them, you know, learn the basic talking points and what they stand for. Um, so I felt really confident about striking up a conversation like that as I was going into campus. But as I was talking to people, I was surprised because most people are going to answer the question with, oh, I I grew up in the Mormon church or I grew up Catholic. I my parents are this. But Mm -hmm. most people don't follow a religion at all. You know, they're just they're, you know, they're into the idea of spirituality and stuff and meditation and stuff like that. But we really don't have a big religious population. Yoga. Yeah. Actually, (laughs) actually yoga goats i just learned that this morning oh there is goat yoga, yoga. Goats. <laughs> what goat yoga is a real thing dude i don't know i've never heard of this it's arizona though so <laughs> okay yeah. you're gonna have to explain this this is this is news to me um there's i don't know how big it is other places but there's a company that has like miniature goats and they dress them up and they load them up in an RV, and you can rent them out for, like, parties and stuff like that. You're making money on yoga goats. Yeah, and you just do yoga. With, they stand on top of you as you do certain poses. You get some good pictures. It's kind of cute. Like, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it's a little weird, but... You know, the things that American... Because I guarantee this is an American thing. It's got to be. The things that Americans will pay for is... It just never ceases to amaze me. Capitalism. The, yeah, I mean... You can make money off of nearly anything. Dress a miniature goat, put it on your back, and just, I don't know, get on your hands and knees and call it good. 20 bucks. (laughs) There's your new money maker in Steam, dude. (laughs) New fundraiser for the new crew. That's right. Yoga goats. um, So, Jenna, what, what what is, after three years of college now, what is the biggest thing you've learned in your own personal walk with Jesus? What is something that, you know, regardless of where you go to school that you, that God has shown you over these last three years? You know, I, that's a hard one. I think it's just to remember his presence, you know, wherever you are, you know, a Christian campus, a secular campus, you know, not in school, you know, he's there. And if you, make that effort to form a relationship with him he will provide in a lot of aspects and you know it can be nerve-wracking sometimes when you don't have the guidance that you used to but i i feel like that's what we're called to do eventually you have to get out of that environment and put all of these practices into practice put them into action um so that you can eventually help help others to sort of see the light that's deep that's deep (laughs) 
I mean, it's probably like, deeper than anything we've ever said. <laughs> <laughs> it probably is right there. It's like, boom. Um, right. Yeah, because that's, I think on, on any age, what you just nailed was something that I think every age struggles with. Even um, geriatric ministry, right? Yeah. With, with people that are, I, and I don't mean just senior adult, I mean above senior adult, right? That little, little anyway, we'll move on. I'll get in trouble. <laughs> no, um, yeah. But, but we all need to put things into practice, and then we forget what we know. And so, yeah. Well, it's a lot easier said than done, for sure, but... Yeah. that's that's what's been pointed out to me hmm. good well let's let's spend the last few moments we have together today um wait wait, wait. i got a, i got oh. a question okay a question because i don't know what your last question is um, but <laughs> it's gonna to, be great i want okay so so th- this probably won't be so great so i want to save your greatness <laughs> for the end okay okay <laughs> but jenna um because of of your life in your home i mean I, I know your your christian home christian life you know you love your church um you know you're in the word um I asked you the other night, you know, how are you and God doing, you know, and, and, and we laughed at that. And you're like, well, what do you think? And I was like, well, I don't know. That's why I'm asking. Um, you caught me off guard. I, I did, which is good. I love those catch you off guard moments. Great. Um, but let's turn the conversation around a little bit and go <coughs> um, being that person, right? Being that person of faith, uh, putting your, your faith that you know into action. Um, what is it like, though, going back into a church setting or back into your Christian setting with friends and they all know that you're part of a, a big secular university and you're working in a very secular job um, and you're in the middle of all this, you know, Christian uh, or I shouldn't say Christian, but just chaos, right, in the world and they may see you maybe not <coughs> take sides or take stands. Do you get any pushback from the Christian world at all going like, man, how can you do that on such a secular campus when you're working with all the different, you know, agencies that are part of part of that campus? Yeah, it's it's definitely different. You know, when I go back from with my friends from high school, sometimes there's conversation points that, you know, I hear every day that we just don't really talk about. Um, You know, like cussing is a big one. Like it's really it's funny to kind of see that dynamic between like a college campus and, you know, past friends. But, you know, so that can be interesting sometimes i there hasn't necessarily been pushback i don't think i i've been lucky to be with a group that sort of understands kind of kind of the situation but i i definitely think it could come up i i'm i'm not very vocal about my faith on a daily basis on the campus you know because it just it results it could result in a lot of relationships being lost or like a a grade issue um, so you just have to find ways, creative ways to sort of show it without necessarily coming out and saying it. And then you can sort of build up that relationship and there can be a good time to sort of talk about the deeper stuff. So, but you, so you don't you don't really get pushback from the Christian world for not taking a hardcore stand. Yeah, I I've been lucky. I, I definitely see where you're coming from, though. That could be an issue for a lot of people, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, oh, I, I, I said ask that because I didn't I didn't know because I know sometimes you know as pastors we go into situations where people are like you know just coming at us with well how come you didn't take this stand or yeah. that stand and yeah for sure like, well like you said it's just it's being jesus and putting jesus into action so mm-hmm. okay i'm ready for your last question <laughs> now that you got your burrito in your mouth i got you <laughs> perfect time didn't i i kind of set you up that way so <clears throat> we have um i've been fortunate to hear stories about this guy for long, long. <laughs> Jenna, this is not where you can speak at all. Great. Lots of stories of, of Eric as a youth pastor. And I have said since I got here pretty much that uh, I really, I mean, because I'm kind of risk averse as a youth pastor. So um, I really, it, it would take a lot for me to do something that could be even like close to the measure of what he's done as far as getting himself in trouble or what he should have gotten in trouble for. <laughs> So I'd be interested as somebody who is in his youth group as a middle schooler. Um, can you can you share maybe a story or two of uh, just uh, Eric's craziness for us and 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 some good youth pastor stories of him? Man, he's gonna kill me for this. Um. <laughs> no, it's it's perfect. Hey, I, it's his fault. This is all his fault. So anything that is said is on him. So you can you can just let it rip. You asked for this. <laughs> I, I don't know. It was always just so, 
so funny. Just the crazy things he would come up with for games. Did you drop your burrito? See, games. She went right to I'm games. Like, a big part of it. You see that? She went right to games. I, like, I remember there was, what was it? I think it was Blacklight Dodgeball. Um, and we would, the, <laughs> the whole church would just, um, the whole, like, youth room would just have these, like, strobe lights going. We had, like, dubstep music playing. And then, I mean, they weren't just, like, your nice little foam dodgeballs. No, these they, things were, they like... they were rubber. These, they were intense. And, like... Welt makers. I... <laughs> I can't believe... Um, so, I mean, I was... I think I was in seventh grade, you know, and I was just going to youth group. Like, I was excited. We were going to play some dodgeball. Woo, you know? And about halfway through, I... I wasn't paying attention as I sh like I should have been, um, but all, all of a sudden there's a dodgeball on my face, and then I get up and everything's blurry, and I'm like, wait, my glasses. I felt so bad. So um, <laughs> I look at my glasses are all the way across the room, and they're just in half. <laughs> um, <laughs> you can relate to these, can't you? Uh -huh. See, it's not just me. So I was like, ooh. So I had some tape over my glasses for a little bit, but it was still it, it was still so nerdy, fun. but she was so oh, sweet. Hey, you know that was your fault. <laughs> Um. Yeah, he was he was just a special one. I oh, a special I, one. <laughs> just a special one. Um, I've never had that extravagant of games and adventures with with anybody else. It's um it's impressive She's actually. So kind. Um, well, I'll tell you this. This uh, they've heard this story before, but for your benefit, we'll let you hear this because this is going to probably make sense to you then. Uh, so when I first got here, <clears throat> the first summer. We had gone into pandemic, right? So mm -hmm. I got here in 2019, and our first summer camp we had to do here on campus and uh, and do it differently than normal, no district stuff. And so I asked him before camp begins, hey, would you take on games? I mean, he'd been a youth pastor for 25 years. Still didn't know him well enough yet. I pro had I known better, <laughs> I probably wouldn't have let, asked him to do it. But I said, hey, would you take care of games for the week? And he's like, oh, yeah, that'd be great. And so, you know, of course, he does – the big harebrained schemes. Yeah. He's got trash cans full of water and all kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah. So he comes up with this idea to have a game in our park right down the street, a big, massive tarp, right? I, I don't even know how big the thing was. It was big. It was huge. Should have been bigger. <laughs> it was huge. And soap, water all over this, this tarp. And in the middle were these truck inner tubes for tires, right? So, like, all different sizes, big ones in the middle of, uh, of the, the tarp. And we, he set it up so that the, the teams would come running in from the square, right, and go to the center and try and get the tubes and get them to their team. Well, one of my adults had to go to a hospital with another student who got hurt not in a game shortly before this. So I jumped in and I, I was on. This sounds so bad. It, it was bad. <laughs> uh, it, it ends up real bad for me. <laughs> not for you, but it ended up bad for me. So I, I jump in on one of the teams. And ironically, the mom who had gone to the hospital with another student, her two boys were, one was in front of me and one was to my right. We go running in. The kid to my right slips and is sliding across the thing. So I didn't want to hit him. So I kind of leapt over the top. Okay. And as I left leapt over the top, his older brother was coming this way. Oh, no. And he went down to one knee and my chin goes right into his kneecap. Oh, dear. You can share what was on the tarp. <laughs> Flesh was on the tarp. It was great. I mean, I felt bad. What but were you thinking? His lip was laying on the tarp, like detached. Lip. It wasn't that bad. Well, it was bad. I, the doctor was surprised I didn't put a hole in my, in my lip. And here it was six months later, found out they cracked a tooth. So <laughs> it, it was cracked. Like, if you have your tooth that sits like this, it went around. Like, it was cracked all the way around. <laughs> Oh no! Yeah. Hey, I got workers' comp for it, so I suppose oh, that's a win. Go. No, so the risks you take so. for good youth games. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Jenna. Thank you. Uh, wow. Yeah, and then I was stupid enough to do a very similar version of that game at fall retreat, and his youngest boy, Garrick, and another the same student who got hurt up here uh, at summer camp got concussions, and Garrick had a big old big old knot on his head. That's funny. We we didn't have that many see, she injuries. She says that's funny. You see that? It wasn't well, like, not, oh. Did, not you, like, did you soften? That's not funny. like that's like, no, I'm sorry, Garrick. It's not funny. Um, <laughs> no, it's that's, funny. No, it's that's funny. Right. It's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't feel it. 
maybe I was just young enough to not realize, but I don't feel like in Arizona you had that many injuries on your record. You know, well, I wasn't there long enough to have too many. Okay, gotcha. I mean, we had a broken collarbone, and we had okay, there an was ankle a collarbone. We had, I mean, there was had, like there silly some, stuff. Like I, I remember in one of the churches that we stayed at overnight, you let people like play with like basketballs and stuff inside, and then there was food nearby. So like, it, I think it was Kevin. He kicked one of the balls and like piping hot chocolate went everywhere on everybody yeah we we're we we're in pine top yeah, yeah yeah so that was that was rough so that was inconvenient like everyone had inconvenient I mean, it was. <laughs> everybody got scalded with <laughs> hot chocolate <laughs> it wasn't a very big gym that we were in yeah. yeah so that was that was rough but you yeah not not really as many broken bones and stuff you, you got out of that one if you went over the list of injuries you had while you were in newport It'll be my it would take a 45 <laughs> minute show. It, it would take a chapter. Yeah. You yeah. could literally tell, we could probably do a two or three part series on injury on the stories, best on the best injuries it as is. a youth pastor. And I haven't had really any. But you see, Jenna, you were, you were, I mean, you, when I left, Nate came in. As I a knew youth you pastor. were going to bring this up. Yeah. You, just, you just had to redeem and, yourself here. And Nate <laughs> had a worse record than I had. Well, I mean, poor Nate, though. Like, I, a lot of it just wasn't even his fault. It never is youth pastor's fault. I, it you, was never Nate's you fault. You challenged that, though. I don't know. Some of your <laughs> ideas. <laughs> kinda, it's but, yeah, poor Nate. Every retreat we went on, somebody broke something or got hurt. See, and we don't make people do things. It's people do this as youth pastors, and they get hurt. But now when youth pastors do it, and they get hurt, like Nate. Nate, I'm, Nate had injuries. I, yeah. I mean, every youth pastor has injuries. So, anyway, I, <laughs> we can write books. Youth yeah, especially books when other youth pastors do the games. That is true. That is true. <laughs> so I, I just really, um, Jenna, am glad that uh, you came to visit us all the way from Arizona and uh, just so excited to have you be part of us. And, I mean, hopefully that you're going to go home and have good good stories of things that we've done this week. So, oh, my gosh. I mean, so but this is it. This I'm is excited. Like the podcast. So tell me, what, 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 is, what is it like leaving desert, one kind of desert, to another kind of desert. See, I mean, y'all complain about this desert, but it's nice with this desert because you can like dig into the soil and you plant things and things grow. Okay. <laughs> that every, is true. Every lawn here has like lush green grass as long as you put in irrigation and you've got like flowers, wildflowers, you've got all these crops. Yeah, Arizona, it's a little bit harder. Um, you got pebbles as a front yeah, yard. Yeah, gravel, gravel, artificial no turf. Um, <laughs> Yeah, not really, not really as much irrigation either. Um, I lived in New Mexico for oh yeah, a little while. Oh, yeah, yeah, very so, yeah. similar. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so that's a lot of cactus. No, not really any cactus up here. Um, Are you talking about, like, the Sonoran cac- cacti? Yeah, we have the big saguaros. Um, that's, like, the thing that we're known for. Um, that's, that's about all that we're known for. Hot. <laughs> hot like 100 yeah. plus all the time I, funny enough the like the temperature doesn't feel too different here i maybe it might be a little bit more humid here but I, we're getting into monsoons right now so it's actually kind of similar like we're both kind of in the high 90s so so yesterday we're driving she goes hey your brown has it, it looks good with a little tinge of green in it so i thought i mean <laughs> you were, you complained about all the weeds but at least they like have a green tint here like in arizona it's just like nothing forever so you went to Multnomah Falls. What did you think of that? Yeah, that was crazy. I Yeah, Gideon took me up. Um, we did the, I think it was like a two and a half hour drive. And it was interesting because like it's all flat here mm-hmm. for the most part. Or I guess there's hills, but there's not much on the hills. But then you get into like pine trees and it just gets greener. Like I didn't even know that was possible almost. <laughs> like, <laughs> Well, because when you think of Oregon, you think of green, right? Yeah, I guess that's fair. But uh, I mean, when I interviewed with him, I came from Oklahoma, which is flat and dry <laughs> and gross and hot and i came to a place that's flat and dry and gross and hot but i thought i was coming to green oh. and i didn't come to See, green that's worse like you didn't know what you were getting into but well, i did like when i came and interviewed i suppose <laughs> see but coming from arizona's <laughs> desert to this desert so much better well i mean and this we, is we actually have water like, yeah this is his happy place like i i don't know how he made it this lo- that long in arizona without <laughs> having a river so close how'd you like the boat that was awesome yeah you just don't do that in arizona (laughs) it's just not a thing you know i mean the fact you got to drive a long way to get get to water just like drive 10 minutes and stick it in and he's like oh i went fishing last week like that's yeah that he needs that in his life well listen to this (laughs) well i i spend 
I spend, at least now, I spend almost every day down at the dam playing disc golf now. Oh, yeah. Because nobody's inviting me to fish, it's, so I have to go play disc oh, golf. I got to gotta, so I gotta fill my time with well, something. you'd be popular at the U of A. We have a big disc golf team. <laughs> I love disc golf. It's the best. I'm getting good, too. Ooh. I bought more discs yesterday, by the, the way. the same nine holes over and over again. You should be getting good. Uh, it's okay. 18, thank you. No, you, you play the first nine twice. I, it doesn't I, I play the first 12. You play in the big grass. You play the big grass, then I'll be impressed. Well, that's I'm not getting ticks. No, I'm not impressed. Oh, is it ticks? Really? I they told me about the little like goat head weed things. Yeah, there. those aren't we funny either. That yet, though. Yeah. Just go have a roll That'll around in the grass day. out yeah. there, That'll like the, the one day. guy that was running away from you guys. So hey, <laughs> viewers, we know you're on your lunch hour, and uh, and we are just so thankful. I don't know what are, how are we doing on time. Are we there? Uh, we have six minutes. Six minutes. So, um, you know, just kind of bringing this full circle with Jenna and just the idea of your Christian faith and your Christian walk. And, and how you do that. Maybe you feel like you're stuck. Um, Jenna is a great example of, of you can grow up as a Christian. You can do all the right things. You can prepare yourself for the world. And the world gives you just the opposite of what you prepare for. And then what do we do with that? Um, and maybe that's where you're stuck. I know I've been stuck in that sometimes, thinking I'm, I'm, I'm prepared. And then what I'm prepared for never seems to happen. And I have to go look for it. Um, so I think what I want to challenge us with today is, is go look for it. Go look for how you can put in practice, like what Jenna pointed out, how you, you can put it in practice your faith. And maybe it was somebody that you know, that you work with, that you're close with, that you're eating with right now. Or maybe it's somebody that's totally, you know, unfamiliar to you. Maybe you don't even know their name. Um, step out of the box, people, and, and give some, some time to put in your faith into practice. Um, and not just necessarily in a church way, um, but do it in a Jesus way. And, uh, and you know, love, love somebody. And I'm not jumping on the whole hey, coexist and love everybody, because I think Jesus says, you know, uh, love everybody, but hate the sin. And, and so many times, I think even in, in like what your case is, Jenna, you grow up loving everybody and you learn about all the sin that you get in the real world. And sometimes as Christians, we're not prepared mm -hmm. to actually put the love and the, and the judgment together. Yeah. But as Christians, we are told we, we are to judge. Um, that's the fruits of the Spirit. You're known by, by, by the fruit and, and helping and encourage and accountable uh, to each other with your brothers and sisters. So go and, and do that. So there, I turned into a sermon. Didn't mean to do that. But the challenge is go and, and put your faith into practice today. And um, yeah, step out of your box. I don't think we asked. What are you ma ma uh, majoring in? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm a physiology major. So it's sort of how the body works and like anatomy. Um, I, yeah, I'm hoping to go into medical school. I'm I'm applying right now, so we're going to see how that goes. But what kind of doctor do you want to be? See, like everybody asks me that and I never have a really good answer, but I I <laughs> you rotate through all the different specialties once you get there. Um so we'll see how that goes, but I like working with kids, so maybe pediatrics or just like family medicine in general. Um yeah. Yeah. So what? it doesn't surprise me that she's going in this field because both of her parents, not just one, <laughs> not but but two, um, are pharmacists, which is kind of down on what your history is. Yeah, I was a pharmacy tech from really? eighteen. I was eighteen years old when I started, all the way up till a few years ago. Yep my my parents would love you. Um, there's Steeler not fans. My parents asked me over and over and over again, why don't you just become a pharmacist? You know everything about being a <laughs> pharmacist anyway. Go ahead and do it. You wor work just as hard as all the pharmacists do being a tech. And I'm like, yeah, nope, not going to do it. I don't want that job. That's okay. <laughs> they, yeah, they need their tech. They put up with all the garbage. I, <laughs> yeah, they, they are very thankful for techs. But they met at the U of A in pharmacy school. So they are... Aww. Oh uh, yeah, they so, are both pharmacists. So where 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 are you applying for medical school? Like what do um, you have? Can you can you name drop some of the schools I, that you're trying to get into? Because <laughs> this trouble. podcast is so huge, you might just get like scholarship money. Yeah, who um, knows? You, you never know who's listening. Yeah. You know, you never know. I well, who did I do? I think I did five schools. Um, I did three in state. So U of A has a Tucson branch and a Phoenix branch. There's Creighton up in Phoenix. They have a Phoenix satellite. There's Reno up in Nevada and Texas Christian. So we'll see. We'll see if any of those work out. Right now, I have to write them a lot of essays about why I want to go to the school. So I'm in the middle of doing that. Cool. Well, good luck. And uh, <coughs> it was great meeting you. And Thanks for taking time to uh, just talk to our to our listeners uh, that are just like you. And uh, uh, if you want to get on the show, 
all you got to do is really ask and put yourself <laughs> out there. I mean, it's going to happen, you know, make yourself available. And, you know, we've had Andy and Kelly on the show. So, I mean, we Gabriel's been on the show a few times. Woo. Yeah. So, and you're probably going to be on the show sometime this summer. <laughs> <laughs> As filler. You know what? I should I just try and get Gideon on the show so he can sit there quiet the whole time. <laughs> actually, you know what? If we get Gideon on the show, he might actually start talking. I doubt it. I doubt it. So He's mean. like, no. <laughs> so mean. Yeah. No, I'm uh, a fan. Like, I am I'm proud of that. Like, it's it's a good podcast. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> thank you. Well, we uh we are excited to have you. Folks, uh I don't know exactly when this aired, but uh, we, uh, we hope you're having a good summer. Keep praying for this guy as yeah. he's on sabbatical. And, uh, you know, I know, I know we're going to have lots of stories when we get to the fall. Yeah. Uh, we have to have a whole podcast just for the stories. Oh, I would imagine, I would imagine the first or second podcast after you return will be just dedicated to, uh, the, the follow up to sabbatical what? The so sabbatical we, what? Sabbatical what? so we can hear what you, uh, what you experienced. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm keeping a journal. Actually. I'm, I'm really hoping. I told him to do video diary, like little video recordings. You thought that was lame. There's going to be some cool videos in lame. service. You said it was lame. That, did I? <laughs> Again, I don't know when this podcast ends up airing, but uh, on Sunday mornings and on our website, hermnaz.church, you'll be able to find in our media section some videos that we've put together, that we've been putting together throughout the the, the whole sabbatical journey um, that uh, that illustrate where you are and what you're doing and it's kind of the same idea, I guess. Um, I, I, yeah, so yeah. be looking for those. Those are good, but uh, it's gonna be fun. I'm ready. I hope you fall out of a boat. Days. That's 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 the goal. I want to hear a story of you falling out of a boat. She almost fell out of the boat yesterday. You can tell I, she hadn't been in a boat. It very was often. not that bad. You're was, like making a mountain bad. out of. Did a did Gabe out. try to push her? No, she did it all on her own. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, if like, no, if not anyone, it would have been Gideon. Not even come back. Gideon would have been the pusher. <laughs> Well, you didn't even have the tube out yesterday. That's no, just sad. It was just a ride. It was just a ride. You got to go out there and tube. Yeah. Well, Let's, you know. Anyway, we'll see. we're we're wasting time. Okay, folks. We'll see you next time on the Morning Burrito Podcast. Enjoy lunch. Bye, friends. <laughs>